what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I feel like we're nearing the completion of this Evo build. There's still a lot of like little things to do, but there's not a ton, if that makes sense. For example, we need to sort out our power steering system. And that is the first thing we're gonna be doing today. Really trying to keep this engine bay as clean as possible and hiding as many hoses and wires as possible. So in the last episode, we were messing around with the power steering system. This hose right here, stock, runs up and over the motor mount. We are trying to relocate that underneath the motor mount, but we're kind of having to bend this elbow right here a lot, like pushing it down. And I have a feeling that's gonna break over time. And seeing how this is power steering fluid that would be squirting out of it, and this is a manifold that would be like at 10 trillion degrees, that's a very, very solid way to burn this entire thing to the ground. So we're gonna have this elbow right here remade hopefully using our factory line. And I think they should be able to just remake this piece right here with like a 20 or 30 degree angle to go down underneath the motor mount. And then we need to ditch this line right here. So we are gonna have a hard pipe made that runs right from this hose right here. And it's gonna go underneath the motor mount as well and connect to this hose right down here. So we gotta measure that out and we need to pull this line off, which might be kind of hard, but we will get it figured out. So that's the first thing we're gonna do today is get this power steering 100% situated. So let's do it. I didn't really expect to pull the entire subframe off just to get that line off, but we had to. The transfer case was in the way, and that was the easiest way to do it, is just pull the, pull the entire subframe out again. So, kind of backtracked a little bit, take one step back to make like 10 steps forward is the, uh, is the current situation. All right, we got our lines off. So this guy right here needs like a 30 degree bend downward. And then we need to remake this line right here, just a straight 16 inch piece, preferably with these flared ends. Well, I just got back to the shop with our new power string line, which cost quite a bit of money, not gonna lie, to have made. They redid the whole end, as you guys can see, but they bent it the wrong freaking way. It does bend how factory is. It needs to be the other way. So I hope that they can fix this. All right, we got the line back, throwing it on right now to make sure it's the right angle, and it looks like we're all good to go. Let's get this thing fully secured, and then I'll show you guys the other little pipe that we had made. Okay, so the hard part's all finished up. We got it ran underneath the motor mount. I didn't want it to ever come close to the pulleys. Well, it's already a very, very close call, as you guys can see, but I didn't want it to be revving on the pulleys whatsoever. We went ahead out of that little clamp right there, and that'll make sure it never, ever touches that water pump pulley. Now for the other pipe, this is the one we brought in, and that's what we came out with. Beautiful, I might powder coat that black. I don't know, let's throw it on real quick. And if it's a little too shiny and stands out too much, we can powder coat it black. We got the new line on, it runs right on the inside of the frame rail. So we're all good to go there. We can go ahead and slap our subframe back up in the car and move on to the next thing. This here is the finished, completed, final look of how everything is set up for the power steering. 
I'm not the biggest fan of these clamps, but I'm also not the biggest fan of these clamps either because I've had kind of bad luck with these things leaking but they definitely do look better than these guys here. All lines are in underneath the motor mount. I think that looks so much cleaner. Nothing going on right here. We do need to kind of clean up all that dust, but let's move on to the next thing of the day. All right, my friends, everything to do with the whole turbo kit, the whole assembly needs to be gone through. The intercooler needs to be Cerakoted. Turbo needs to be gone through. All the intercooler piping, which is over there, needs to be repowder coated. Downpipe needs to be dealt with. We have a lot of work to do. So to get started off, hmm, where should we start actually? We already know the intercooler is gonna be Cerakoted black. Hot side of the turbo is gonna be Cerakoted black. Not exactly sure what color we wanna make this guy here. We did have the T51R mod done by Turbo Lab of America. I just, I don't know if I wanna coat this any certain color or if we should leave it silver or if we should coat it black. She sits right down there. So I don't know if yellow would look good. I don't know if black would look good. I'm very indecisive with this whole turbo kit. Either way, we can deal with that guy later. That doesn't need to be Cerakoted. It doesn't get that warm whatsoever. So whatever we decide to do with that, we can powder coat it. All these parts here, the downpipe elbow, wastegate and all this stuff, that can all be Cerakoted black, along with the hot side and the intercooler. The high temp Cerakote that we use is a air cure and it does take about three days to fully cure. So we need to get on this ASAP. So let's go ahead and get this guy pulled off the turbo. We need to sandblast it. That's already blasted and we need to sandblast these parts as well. Okay guys, let's go ahead and sandblast these three pieces here. This guy is by far the crustiest and I hope this thing can clean up okay. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. So we got everything sandblasted and now we're gonna throw it in the oven. This is an air cure Cerakote that we are using. The same exact Cerakote that we use on all of the hot parts for the Evo 10. It is a Glacier Black C7600 series by Cerakote. They recommend, but do not require that you pre-bake it. So they recommend it, it must be better. 300 degrees, 30 minutes, pull it out, let it cool down and we can get our Cerakote sprayed out. So that's what we're gonna do. If we can't fit the intercooler in the oven, which I don't know if we can, um, we don't need to pre-bake it, but it's always better if you do. So that's what we're gonna do with all the hot parts. Yep. We have the turbo nearly completely disassembled. I do wanna Cerakote the center cartridge. I'm just not so sure we can get this thing completely apart. This wheel is marked. So the wheel, the nut, and the shaft are all marked together exactly where it needs to go. So I'm comfortable taking all that off. I have rebuilt one of these turbos before, this exact turbo we run on this car and we did throw new seals in it. So I'm comfortable with doing all that. I'm just not so sure about sandblasting and seracoding the center cartridge here, but let's go ahead and get this thing disassembled and just go from there. So this right here is the cage. This is the expensive part. I think this right here to replace is about $400, but this is where all the bearings sit. So you gotta keep this thing nice and clean. Feels super, super tight. I don't know why we couldn't clean this thing up, get it all masked off, sandblast and Cerakote it. 
there's nothing to it. Once you get that cage out, it's completely empty, just hollow holes everywhere. There's no other bearings or bearing races in it, but I'm still gonna go ahead and mask it off. So let's run through with brake clean, get it all nice and cleaned up, and then I'm gonna mask off every single hole just to make sure that we don't get any sort of sand in it, and then we can cerakote this piece as well. I regret not doing it on the 10, because these things get really, really rusty. So it'll be nice to have this thing coated on this build. All right, guys, we got all of the parts hanging up. So here's the intercooler. We didn't end up doing the pre-bake or the gas out cycle on the intercooler. Actually, she would not fit in the oven. And then we got the little downpipe elbow and then all of the turbo pieces along with the wastegate, like lower housing part. The Cerakote we are gonna be running is this very, very high temp C7600. So we gotta mix this up. There's a bunch of solids in the bottom that we need to completely mix up. There is no catalyst with the C7600 like there is with the H151 satin aluminum that we have sprayed on a lot of this car. That requires a part B catalyst. This does not. So let's get her shaken up, run her through the strainer into the gun and we can get everything sprayed out. I'm just gonna wet down the floor a little bit to make sure we don't get circuit stuck on the floor. This C7600 is way more nasty smelling than any other Cerco or any sort of paint I've ever sprayed. So if you're gonna use this kind of stuff, make sure you guys are wearing a very, very high quality respirator. This stuff is nasty, you don't wanna breathe it. Just like the satin aluminum, this is a very thin coating, one to two mil thickness is what we're after. So any sort of threads, that kind of stuff, you don't really need to mask off if you do not want to. We got all of the parts and pieces sprayed out. You're not supposed to touch these for about two to four hours. They will be wet up until that point. And then they take five full days to fully cure, which is, it's a bit of time, but the end result is well worth it. It definitely does dole out a little bit when it's fully cured. As you can see right now, it's pretty glossy and it still remains fairly glossy, but it definitely doles out, loses a little bit of that shine when it's fully cured and after you run them for a few for a few cycles. But this is how everything turned out. Intercooler, nice and beautiful. That downpipe elbow, and then all of the turbo pieces. I'm excited to get this turbo back together and finally have a brand new looking turbo. We still need to figure out what we're gonna do with this compressor housing. I don't know if yellow would be too much. I think it'll look good, but it might be a little bit too much yellow in this engine bay if we do decide to keep the yellow. As far as I know, this is the highest temperature rated coating on the market. This is good up to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, which I highly, highly doubt we'll ever see anywhere near 1800 degrees. It might get close, actually. I don't really know, but either way, we run the same exact coating on the 10 and have never had an issue. If you guys want this circle, I'll link it down below. I'm super excited with how everything came out. I think it looks sick. I might end up doing the logo on the intercooler, either the AMS logo or the Vossen logo, and either like blue or yellow or maybe like a matte black. Pumped with how all those parts turned out. Pumped with our power steering line setup relocation, I guess you'd call it. I'm just hoping over time that we don't have issues of the pulleys rubbing into the lines, because as you can see, she's fairly close. Either way, it looks a thousand times better. If we do, we can figure that out then. That's gonna be a wrap for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Unfortunately, we can't run these parts for five days, so I'm not sure what we're gonna do in the meantime, but I'm sure we can figure something out to do. Maybe we'll work on the Evo 10, one of the 10s, maybe both the 10s. Peace out, I'll see you boys tomorrow.